And now here's my stateside running mate, Sammy Menick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to World's Championship Wrestling. And say, fans, you know we have a tremendous card for you tonight. A really great card. Some of the best matches. The Italian family would just lunchtime stop. Everything was just stop. It was Saturday and Sunday. Everything stops for World Championship Wrestling at 12 o'clock. So that was one of the major things on TV in those days. This off right away, then all oh, four rounds off for Milano. Coming off the ropes again, nicely executed four rounds. Sided, whoa! Well, as far as the fans are concerned, of a Sunday morning at uh, Channel 9 here in Melbourne, uh, when they opened the gates, you could get there uh, an hour before the matches were scheduled to start, and uh, there'd be hundreds out the front waiting. And once they opened the gates, it was uh, the charge of the life brigade to get in there to get the front seats. And uh, it was packed every morning to capacity of a Sunday morning. It was uh, very good. Uh, in reference to some of the, the highlights of uh, them, they'd come dressed up in their, uh, in their country's uh, gear, their ritual gear, whatever they had. And, uh, oh, they had, yes, if you had Italians, you'd pack it. If you had Greeks, you'd pack it. Uh, if you had Japanese, you'd pack it. And, uh, you know, wherever you went, Americans were very big. I said he's one of the toughest and one of the roughest men you'd ever wish to see on World Championship yeah, so Wrestling. Good. And I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished yet. Well, you've interrupted me once more. Carlos! You've got all your students. Wrestling was big in Australia in the 1960s and 70s when names like Brute Bernard, Mario Milano, Killer Carl Cox, and Spiros Arion brought with them a huge cult following and sell out crowds at Festival Hall in Melbourne and Brisbane, the Sydney Stadium, and the Perry Lake in Perth. Not to mention the regional centres visited on a monthly basis by the travelling wrestling show. Wow! As well as up to 12 live shows a week, the wrestlers would put on weekly television broadcasts which rated well. There were the clean-cut goodies and the baddies, who generally wore moustaches and beards. King Dennis! A bunch of people so dig a bunch of greens. Larry O'Day was one of the few Australian wrestlers on the card. A boy next door type, who for a little while grew facial hair and joined his enemies. And Brower with a lot of power behind those blows. Generally the, the ones that they called the baddies had bald heads and uh, big stomachs and uh, <laughs> looked ugly. And the other ones looked pretty good. So uh, I suppose that's how they classified them. So is it fair enough to say that you changed sides then? You went, you turned into a baby? I got ugly, yeah. I got older. <laughs> it wasn't just the players who were ugly, the play was too. The World Championship wrestling matches were violent, bloody and sadistic. The audiences screamed for more and showed up in such big numbers expecting to see it. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. They wanted to see the war. They wanted to see the cage matches. They wanted to see uh, the villain uh, getting his uh, head split open or whatever it may be. And uh, that was part of the uh, part of the excitement of the whole thing. It was uh, the goodies and the baddies and uh, cowboys and Indians, whatever way you wanted to look at it. Wallaby Bob trying to pull back, pull off Abdullah Butcher. Big Bad John is holding the legs, holding the legs of Mark Lewin. Wallaby Bob pulls him away and slams one into him. And Wallaby Bob, oh, Wallaby's fighting for Lewin, but Wallaby's been picked up. Oh, the brain buster coming down. Does wrestling encourage violence? I don't think so, no. I never thought so. I think people identify with it and like it. But I don't think children go out and uh, become violent because they watch wrestling, no. Jim Barnett is the promoter who first brought wrestling to Australia in 1964 on the urging of his friend Jack Little, who was to become its most famous commentator. The Bulldog Brower is the man that absolutely had the strength of ten men in that ring and went berserk, Dick the Bulldog Brower. I'm going to crush you! You can't hurt me, Scott! You can't hurt me, Jack! You can't hurt me, Jack! You can't hurt me! 
Jim Barnett is still promoting wrestling in the United States, where it's still big time. In his first ever television interview, 70-year-old Barnett recalls the heydays in Australia when he ran the business from a penthouse in the Chevron Hotel in Sydney. We found that the Australian, especially the new Australians, the Italian and the Greek, loved wrestling. So we tried to give the people American wrestling. We tried to use some Australian wrestlers. We would try to bring in a Greek wrestler, usually from Greece if possible. And the Italian wrestlers that could speak Italian were always very popular. The Italian hero was Mario Milano. 30 years on, he's still a draw card, he still wrestles occasionally, and he's still a hero. Oh, the fans, uh, especially the Italians and Greeks, very good, very good. Always, uh, you know, always try to defend me if I was in trouble or invite me out, uh, you know, perhaps sometimes. Uh, was all just to show off and say to the neighbor, hey, Mario Milano, come to visit me, you know. The Italian community in Australia loves Mario and come out in droves when they know he's going to get back in the ring. Perhaps both are trying to relive the days when he was a champion wrestler. He still is a champion. Still people from Italy love him and they still will love him. And I hope in the future, very soon, I can bring in the Calabria Club to do a show for us. <laughs> Who is your favourite wrestler? Mario Milano, the Italian stadium. If ever there's a revival of wrestling in Australia, Mario wants to be involved. So I can have a little bit uh, left over here to, to, to get. Not bad for an old man. <laughs> the wrestlers brought out to Australia by Jim Barnett came from around the world and played out the ethnic stereotypical roles almost along the lines of World War II players. The nasty German, the vicious Japanese. Such roles were played out for the audiences. Well, I think that's the last... Mario Day stopped wrestling years ago but is still involved in training younger fighters and promotes the sport or sport entertainment as the participants prefer overseas. He believes a large ethnic following wrestling had 30 years ago was mainly due to the fact that the game was so easy to follow. Well, I think it's about the one sport that Australia plays that everybody understands. I mean, really, if you, if, uh, you come out from Italy and you go to an Australian rules match, you don't really understand the rules, but you can understand what happens in a boxing or a wrestling match. They count three or they knock them out. The spectators are playing, getting out of the way. End of the ring post again. And wrestling goes back a long way in uh, the old countries. You know, the Greeks had wrestling in Socrates' time, and there's been wrestling for years and years, hundreds of years in uh, Italian. And you know, some people that come overseas, migrate to Australia, may not speak the best English in the world, but wrestling is a type of a sport that they can understand. You don't have to have the play-by-play. -play. They understand the hands-on type of thing that it is. Not only did the wrestlers have a big ethnic following, they also had a large female following, groupies that followed them around the country. Wrestlers themselves used to call them the ring rats. And uh, they, were, uh, they loved the wrestlers. I mean, all sportsmen uh, have a, a following with the, uh, with the females. And uh, I mean, footballers, uh, cricketers, and wherever you go. But the wrestlers had these women called the ring rats, and uh, they would follow them everywhere. <laughs> well, you don't expect me to comment on that one, do you? <laughs> I, have, I have a few, few calls, a few meetings, a <laughs> couple of kisses, perhaps. <laughs> Why you want to do that? <laughs> days there's not much professional wrestling going on anymore except the occasional exhibition match at an RSL club or shopping centre. There just isn't the following to support it, although Jim Barnett has just signed up with an Australian television network to show one hour a week of American wrestling and he plans to bring them out here on a tour in the next year. 
the greatest wrestler of all time. Who is the greatest of all time? Is it Hulk Hogan or is it Ric Flair? They want to know. I think the Hulk Hogan's a spoiled it. The Yanks have really overkilled it. Both men go to the submission. The trouble is getting all the old ones. They won't get out of it. Like they're in their fifties and sixties. They still want to be involved. They still want to wrestle. Those days are gone, it's finished, it's a new era, and they've got to, they've got to give way to the new ideas, and, and they won't, and that's what's killed it in Australia. Melbourne particularly is dead, because they am not being horrible, but Mario Milano is still wrestling down there, he's nearly 60, and I love Mario, he's a, he's a, he's a top bloke, but really, it's, he's too old, he's, he should be out of it. This was Ken's last match. At 34, he's getting out of wrestling because of injury. As a kid going to watch the live wrestling, he was inspired to become a baddie. I quite love being bad, you know. It's a real thrill, like, I've wrestled in front of 6,000 people, and to have 6,000 people hate your guts, it's an amazing feeling, it's, you know, it really gives you that sense of authority, it's great. At least he admits he's play acting the role of the enemy, but the old participants fiercely protect the image of World Championship Wrestling, maintaining it was all for real. Those punches did connect. Television will wrestle. And that, of course, means an automatic break. Now watch the spoiler on the break. You know, they're professionals. Uh, they know what they're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you get hurt. It's like any, any, any sport you get involved in. Uh, if you don't train for it and you, and you don't know the rules and you don't know the, uh, the capabilities and the way to break fall, uh, it's when injuries do, do occur. But it wasn't for real, was it? I mean, everyone knows it wasn't for real. Well, everyone doesn't know it wasn't for real. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's what you want to do. It was entertainment. And uh, if you say to any wrestler or anyone, was it real, they'd take offence at that and, and, and would react accordingly. They'd show you how real it was. They call me punchy because they can hurt me. I challenge any one of you guys, come here and let me hear you with this butt. This is nothing. Look at this. <laughs> if you can do that, I give you $1,000 to anybody to do that. The abdominal stretch by Milano. A chance here. But Ox Baker's in there. And so I think this is uh, cauliflower ears, broken ribs, knees, ankles. I can tell you very honestly that I didn't rig any matches. If they were rigged, I didn't know about it. Wrestling is sports entertainment. That's the way it is now. I always knew who I thought was the best wrestler, but the best wrestler didn't always win. It's a secret you're not going to let go, are you? Thank you, Josephine. I appreciate the interview. Some people believe politicians' promises. Some people... Uh believe that the best horse wins at Ramwick. I don't know whether they do or they don't. I wouldn't knock anything that's been absolutely fabulous to me. Was it for real, Ted? It was for real. You serious? <laughs> You're not going to say any more? Well, you know, there's no business like show business. Brannigan takes him out, trying for the neck breaker. He's got him up there, the Louisiana neck breaker. Moves him around towards the turnbuckle. This is close. This could be it. He's got to drop him and cover him. The referee is forcing Milano outside the ring. He won't do that to the giant, and he wouldn't do it to Ronnie Miller. Now Brannigan, the flying elbow, body press. Referee hits it. Over. What a match. All I know is that uh, when they went out to, to have their match, there were times I knew who was going to win. The last World Championship wrestling match went to air in November 1978. The Broadcasting Tribunal was putting increasing regulations in force, preventing the television show producers from putting the blood and violence to air. Eventually, all interest was lost. There's always talk of a possible resurgence of wrestling in Australia, but it's just talk. Perhaps the fans of old-time wrestling prefer to just reminisce about the old days. Well, that's all there is. There isn't any more for World Championship Wrestling for this week until tomorrow night at Festival Hall. Don't forget Johnny Doyle and Jim Barnett will present World Championship Wrestling next week, same time, same station. Josephine Kafanya with what could have been Australian television's first multicultural program. Coming up, the arranged marriage option. Number 90.